Welcome to Right to Dream Robotics. My name is Christian Taylor. In this series, we're looking at how to build and program with the Lego Mindstorm EV3 Home Edition. For this episode, we're going to look at how we can program the first robot we built to move. If you don't know how to build a robot, or you've, this is your first time working with the Lego EV3 Robotics, you can look at our previous videos to get you started. Let's get right in. So we've got our robot here built and ready. Let's turn it on. It normally takes about 30 seconds for it to get started. All right, so with your robot now started, let's get into the software. Now, what we're going to do, if you remember our previous episode where we looked at how to move the large motor using rotations, degree, and time. We're going to do the same thing now. So let's move this motor, which is at the left side, and get it to move around. Let's just do something. Let's get it moving and then we'll figure things out as we go on. Now, first of all, we have to know where this particular motor is connected to. If I look at the cable, it's connected to port B. So I make the change here from D to B. Normally, I like to go slow when you're testing a robot because sometimes if it's too fast, it can fall off a table. So don't get too excited. Just go with slow speeds until you know what you're doing, then you can bump up the speed. If you're a beginner, I recommend you work on the floor. It's, it's safer to work on the floor because the robot is not going to fall down. If it's on the table and things get out of control, sometimes the robot can just fall down and break apart. Well, these robots are very robust, but you don't want to have to rebuild them. And sometimes it can actually get damaged if it fell from a longer height. So to avoid any accidents, if it's your first time, you're not very good at this, you're now learning, just work on the ground. So first, I need to connect my intelligent brick to the computer. And like I said in the previous episode, you can use either the Bluetooth mode or use the USB. It's much easier to use the USB, especially for beginners, USB is much safer because your robot is not gonna move and let it go because it will be connected to your computer with a cable. But if Bluetooth is very convenient and if you have Bluetooth capabilities on your laptop, you can connect to Bluetooth. I'll show you how to do the Bluetooth connection in a later episode. So once you connect your EV3 to your computer, you go to this section and then you click on port view. Now port view lets you know what is connected to the intelligent brick. If you look at this right now, you see A and B. So that means I have two large motors connected to port A and B. I can move this around just to show you what happens. Let me take both out. So as soon as I take both out, you see everything disappears, right? Which you can see actually, everything is empty. So let's connect this motor alone to port A. Good, as soon as I did that, you see it comes up on the section for port A. All right, so let's run our program. You can either click on the play button here or click on the run button over here. All right, it didn't move. Now let's look at why it didn't move. Now if you look at the port that I've selected on the program is port B, but then the port the robot is connected to is actually port A. So when this happens, it's not going to work because it will send a command to port B and there's nothing connected to port B. So these are the kind of mistakes that you normally make as a beginner. In fact, even sometimes people who've worked with it for some time still make those mistakes. Now, when that happens, don't panic. There's nothing wrong with your robot. Just check the ports and make sure the ports align, the port here align to what you selected in the software. So you can either change the port here straight to A, so it matches that on the intelligent brick, or you can move the cable to B, so it matches that on the software. Now let's try it again. Good, so that is one rotation at a speed of 30. Let's do two rotations. Let me send it back. Let's do two rotations. Good. So that goes a longer distance than one rotation. Okay, let's increase the speed. Still keep it at two rotations. Let's do a speed of 70. 
which is going to be, as you can imagine, faster than 30. Good. Now let's connect the other motor, the motor to the right. Let's put it at port A. Good. As soon as you do that, you come to port view, you can see port A also comes up. So that's the other motor connected to that place. Now let's move that motor, that's motor A, instead of motor B. To do that, you just change from B to A, and then that's it. So if I run this, I'm going to have motor A move at the speed of 70 for two rotations. Let's see how that works. Good. Now, what if you want to move forward? Because with what we're doing right now, if we move one motor, the robot turns around. But what if we actually want to move the robot forward, like normal vehicles do? So that means we have to move both motor A and motor B at the same time for it to move forward. Now you can see with this block, there is absolutely no way I can do that since it allows me to do only one port or one motor at a time. So that means the large motor block is not good for moving two or more motors at the same time. So let's look at other options that we can use to move both motor A and motor B at the same time. So we go back to action block and then we look for something called move tank. Now, if you don't know what the names are, just send your cursor over the blocks and the name just pops up. So that's move tank. So let's get this. Let's connect it to this and then we can push this aside for now. So now on this block, you see you have, on this side, you have A plus B. So let's click in there, and that gives us all the ports A, B, C, D, and then on this side, A, B, C, D. So what it means is that you can choose two motor, block, uh, two motor ports at the same time. So we have port A and port B as uh, where our motors are connected. So let's choose A and B, which is already there by default, A and B. Now, let's come here and make sure we're on rotations, good. And then one difference you see between, let me connect this back, between this and this is on the move tank block, you get two speeds or two power. But on the large motor block, you get one power. Now, that means you can control these two motors independently. So let's get our robot to move from this spot and end over here. So let's choose a speed, normally the, the default speed is 50, but I can tell you it's good to start slow. Let's choose a speed like 20. So 20 on Moto A and 20 on Moto B. So they go the same speed. And then let's do one rotation. Let's run this. Good. So it didn't get to our target, but at least we got the point. Now let's look at where it is. It's somewhere in between the two lines. So what do you think, uh, how many rotations do you think we need to add to get to the other end? I can bet on two. Let's try two rotations. So two rotations at a speed of 20 for motor A and 20 for motor B. Let's try that. Good. Now two rotations got us slightly past the mark, uh, which is good. So it means we don't need to do two rotations. Now, you don't need to do a whole rotation. You can do a fraction of a rotation. So for example, you can do half of a rotation with 0.5, or you can do one and a half of a rotation, which is 1.5. For this one, I think we should do 1.8 rotations. So let's try. We make the change here, and then we run. Let's see, boom. All right, it's almost there. It's almost there. From this angle, it looks like it's just almost there. So let's do 1.85, 1.85. So you can do a fraction of a fraction. And I think this should do it. Nice. All right, so that's how you get it to move forward to any particular distance. Most of the time in class, uh, my students do a lot of try and error. 
put in some rotation. If it's too much, you reduce or you add more and you keep moving at, just you keep changing the rotation till you get a robot to move from one point to another point that you desire. But there is a, a way that we can actually calculate that and know the exact number of rotations to key in there and it will take you from one point to another point. All right, but we're not gonna get into that. So you can play around with this, get a robot to move forward. If you want the robot to move backwards, for example, I can do minus 20 on each. And then it goes back. Yeah, so it came back to the same place because I didn't change the rotation. The, the rotation is still at 1.85. All I did was reverse speed on the motors and it gets us back here. You can also minus the rotation if you don't want to minus the speed. For example, let me put the speed back to 20, 20, and then do minus 1.85 rotations. Let me send it here. Now, when you do, when you minus the rotation, it means it will apply to both speeds or, or the, both motor A and motor B. Good. But you might be asking, why wouldn't I minus the rotation and rather minus the speed? Now, both have got its uses. For example, if you want to move one motor in one direction and move the other motor in another direction, then you need to apply the minus sign to the speed of that particular port. But if you want all of them to move in one direction, then you can apply the minus to the rotations. So for example, if I want to get the robot to spin, then what I do is this motor goes forward and this motor goes backwards. And if I want to do that, I cannot minus using the rotations because it will get both of them to go back. So what I do is I put the rotation back to positive 1.8, let me do 1.8, and then I minus motor B, this is A, so I minus B. So B is minus 20 and then A is 20. So this will get the robot to spin towards the direction of B. So let's see that, let me lift up the cable. Good. So in this particular instance, you can apply the minus to one motor if you want just one motor to go in reverse. But if you apply the minus to the rotations, both of them would go in reverse. If you intend to spin the robot, you can only minus directly to the speed of that particular port. But if you want the robot to go backwards in one direction, then you can minus both ports or minus the rotation. I know you all want to do the cool stuff that you see, probably what brought you to robotics is you saw a very cool robot doing something really cool or something very complicated. Now, you can do that with time, but it is important to try these things or try these uh, exercises, get your own robot, uh, program it, get it to move, get it to do some of this basic stuff. This will form the foundation of what we will do in the future. You need to practice. It's not just about watching the videos, but you actually need to practice. If you don't have a robot, speak to somebody who can help you get a robot. Build your own robot, try these programs, get them to work, understand the basics, and with time, you would be able to do a lot of complicated stuff. So these are the starting episodes of what we'll be doing in the future. We would be building very complicated, uh, complex robots and complex programs that would do really cool stuff. And if you have any uh, questions or you, something that I said that you don't understand or anything at all, just leave it in the comment section and I'll be glad to help you. And like I said, once again, it's very important to do this stuff. Make sure you're able to do what we do. If you can't do it, you need help, ask questions, we'll help you out. See you in the next episode. Thank you.